Beacon Video presents the 1989 Bus Conference at the Gospel Light Baptist Church in Walkertown, North Carolina. Let's join the conference now as Dr. Wally Beebe speaks on how and why to start a jolly 60s in your church. Leviticus 19.32 says this, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man, and fear thy God, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Why do we have jolly 60s? Number one, if you're a Christian, you ought to be in a good local church. Number two, if you are in a good local church, you ought to be in the people business. That's what we are in church. We're in the people business. All kinds of people. On the front seats over here, it says reserve for the deaf. Thank you. Reserve for the deaf. Thank you. Over here, it says reserve for the ushers. Thank you. Over here, it says reserve for the dumb. Uh, no, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. No. But isn't it true that our societies, our neighborhoods, everywhere we have a whole cross segment of different age groups of people? Uh, one of the reasons I'm not for some of this stuff that's coming out of California is they seem to feel that the only people that are worth salvaging and saving are a bunch of yuppies. That's right. Now I'm telling you the truth. Everything is geared yuppie. Everything is for the young intellectual or the young business person. Well, I've got news for you. There are more than young business people in the world. There are little poor children in the world who haven't got a stinking chance in the world unless you go get them and get them saved. There are some dear elderly people who never were in a fundamental church, a good church, and they haven't got a chance in the world unless the church does something for them. We have all kinds. We're in the people business. We're in the people business. Don't oh, forget it. We're in the people business. All kinds of people, all segments of people. I am so amazed that I'll go into church and it's one group. I mean, they're either all gray-haired or they're all dark-haired or they're all something. That church is missing the boat. Well, the community is full of all kinds of people. We need to reach out to those people. We need to do something with those people. And here are some of the things we need. We need to win them. We need to teach them. We need to train them. We need to counsel them. We're in the people business. The older folks in your community are people. Now, let's talk about the purpose of what we call Jolly Sixties. And I'll explain, hopefully, everything I can about it. If you have questions, you jot it down, and I'll try to answer it. What's the purpose? Number one, the purpose is soul winning. I heard a fellow the other day, and he said, well, I've changed my emphasis. I've changed my emphasis. First of all, you don't change what got you big in the first place. Now, if you, if you, something grew your church, something that was soul winning, that glorified God, that blessed the Lord, that produced souls getting saved, you don't change it. Now, there's some people that are changing things, and it's because they're going through ministerial menopause. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. There's a certain age of people, and they, they say, Who am I? Who am, who am I really? Do I really know who I am? What am I doing? What am I doing? Sometimes I wonder, What am I doing? <laughs> Where am I? You know. But isn't it dumb you hear some of these things? And uh, the teenagers are... The teenagers are saying, who am I, what am I, and all this kind of stuff. The teenagers. Now, people ought to know who they are, you know. But they don't. Who am I? And you know what's sickening? You got people in the sex education courses going to the public school and saying, now you need to determine whether you're really heterosexual or homosexual. I'll tell you what you are. You're a male or a female. And if you're something other than that, you're a weirdo. And I, you were born a male or a female. That's what you were born. You say, well, I'm, I'm really a female in a male body. You're nuts is what you are. <laughs> Nobody's born a homosexual. You become one. And these perverts that go into the schools and spread their filth 
and try to make people question emotions and things that they've had that are normal in growing up, but you don't keep motion, and you don't keep all these things. Dr. Rice used to say, I'm half woman. <laughs> He's talking about his mother. You know, I'll explain it to you later. Um, let's talk about the purpose. Don't change purpose. Don't, don't go through these stages. Look, the Great Commission is the purpose of everything we're doing. The Great Commission. Win souls, baptize the converts, teach them whatsoever things command you. Well, what do you do when you teach them whatsoever things command you? You teach them to win souls, baptize converts, and teach them whatsoever things I've commanded you. Well, what do you do? You, do? you teach them how to be saved, win souls, baptize converts, teach them how to... Now, it doesn't change. Uh, people are stretching to become sensational in what they say with some new doctrine. Didn't you read in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, where they say they want to hear some new thing? Keeping to themselves teachers having itching ears. Want to hear that? Oh, we want to hear Dr. So-and-so. He's deep. Oh, he's deep. Man, is he deep. Not only deep, he's dumb. <laughs> Back to the purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is virtually the same thing as the church, but we want to modify it a little bit because we're going to have what's called a Christian club in a way. Now, let me, let me, I'll explain. The purpose of Jolly Sixties, why reach the older adults? Why work with older adults? Why work with retired people? Why work with people who have, are forced to retire because of physical handicaps, maybe at 47 or 50 years old? Not, they're not 65, and they're not 60s, really. Number one purpose. Soul winning. Soul winning. That's the first purpose. You'll win souls Christ. Number two, fellowship. I um, love working in the military churches over in Europe, Germany especially. Love work. I have some folks, they have military churches here, over in Germany. Now, why? It's a strange mixture in those churches. Do you think you got fellowship and warm fellowship and close fellowship in your church? You don't, you don't know what it's like until you go to a military church. You want to know what? Everybody in that church is employed by the same employer. They have job security. Ain't nobody going to get fired. <laughs> They're all in the military. They all have the same general purpose. Most of them are in the same branch of the service. They all have very similar problems. They're all about the same age group. Big nurseries. I love to preach that gang. Why? They're responsive. They're all on the same stage of their life. They're going to go, 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 do something. John and Sixties are that way, too. Oh, it's not the same purpose as the military age. It, it, they've passed through the children. They don't have any children anymore. they got grandchildren. Some of them got great-grandchildren. Some of them have great, 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 all kinds of great things. But they are in a whole different set of problems that most pastors don't take time to even try to understand. So, well, we've got, we've got our old lady Sunday school class. Isn't that good enough? No, it's not good enough. That's not enough. He said, we've got the old man Sunday school. At Trinity, when I was in Trinity, we used to pick up an old man, Brother Ballard. I brought him to church over and over. He was too old to ride the bus. He couldn't even get up on the bus. If they waited for him to get on the bus, they'd have been 30 minutes late. He couldn't. It took him 30 minutes to climb one step. He's the one that came forward one Sunday morning in the service, and, and uh, Brother Greg got all excited. He said, oh, bless God, here comes Dad. He's coming down to get there. Oh, Brother Ballard is coming down there. And he said, Dad, what would you come for? He said, where's the bathroom, son? <laughs> he could never get my name straight. He called me Brother Beattie. I said, no, Brother Ballard, it's Brother BB, like a BB gun. That's right, Brother BD, it's Brother BD. <laughs> now, that man had problems that I did not have as a 29-year-old man. But he had problems as an 80-year-old that I did not have. He had loneliness I did not have. I had wife family. He did not have wife family. He didn't have anybody cared for him. He didn't have, there were a lot of things that he needed. He had needs. 
that I did not know about. Because I didn't take that. I was young. I didn't know. I want to impress on you that there's a whole segment of your folk that are already in your church that have needs that you've overlooked. They have social needs. And that goes to my second point. Not only do they need to be safe, number two, they have to need fellowship. There's a whole age group there that needs fellowship. And when you build your church building, when you build a building, not only think about us for the hymn books, but also think about lobbies that older folks can stand in and talk. They need to talk. And they need to be not pushed out of the way because everybody's trying to get out of the way. Older people want to stand and talk. They've got to express themselves. There's something they want to tell somebody. How many preachers are here? How many preachers are here? Let me see your hands, preachers. How many older folks in your church have come to you and said, Brother, I want to, I want to take... And it's some little piddly thing to you. And sometimes we get impatient. God forgive us. We get impatient. We say, I wish he'd get this out and forget it. I've got something else to do. And to them, it's the most important little, it's a little trivial matter, but it's important to them. They want to tell something. They want to tell something that happened to their grand, grandchild. They want to tell something that happened to some other old lady. They want to tell something about somebody, oh, this terrible thing happened. They've got to tell you. They're bursting to tell you. But you haven't got time to listen. If you have a Jolly 60s program where you have taken a segment of your time each week and said, this is reserved for the Jolly 60s, you will have time for them to tell you what they are burning to tell you. Expression. I wish you'd put that down somewhere as a little note. Expression. First is soul winning. Purpose. Number two is fellowship. They need fellowship with other Christians. If you go to retirement communities, they've got the weirdest thing you ever saw in retirement communities. In Florida, you go down there, and what have they got? They got a, in retirement communities, they've got a whole bunch of old biddies and old guys that are trying to look young and act young. They're going to all have big dance floor and show you how they can dance. Those poor things, if they fell down, they'd break both hips. So brittle. And they're forcing them into another child. They don't really need that. They're trying to do it. It's a kind of a status thing. They're trying to, they're, they have this uh, kind of organization, that kind of organization, but they don't have a Christian thing to go to that's just for them. A fellowship. That, you see, we have, isn't it strange? You'll go f get a church that's been in existence for 30 or 40 years, and you'll hire, what's the first thing you hire? Well, they got to get us a youth director. Jump for the youth. What about these people who built the church and put blood, sweat, and tears and their money into the church when money meant something. They sacrificed. They built that church. Their hair is gray. They don't have a quick step anymore. And their eye is dim. What about them? Are you going to ignore them and let them sit in that church and rot in an old lady's Sunday school class? Or are you going to do something for them? A lady wrote to me one time, and it's convicted me ever since she did it. She said, what do you do in your church for older people? And I wrote her back and I said, come to think of it, nothing. I would ask you the same thing. Is there anything specifically that you do just for your folk? You know, uh, we could preach a sermon and say, members only, adults only, teens only, so forth. You don't have older folks go on the teen outing. You don't have kids, anybody but juniors, singing the junior choir. But what do you do that is exclusively for that age group from 55 and up that, that you exclude all the kids who are really not interested and teens that are not interested and the children and all of that and the young couples and the yuppies and everybody else in that other age group, the other age group? What do you do just for them? Purpose, number one, soul winning. Number two is fellowship. Number three is Spiritual growth. Now, the reason I'm saying that, and we're, we got the purpose. Now, let's go and, and, and say, who do you get? Who do you get? Number one under who is your elderly and older citizens that are right there in the church. There's a whole element in your church. You need to go and look at your church and look for gray hairs. 
And mine would not be gray. It'd be the same color as the rest of these fellows on the platform if I wasn't allergic to stuff they use on. Don't you tell them I said it either. Some people's youth come in a bottle. My hair's gotten gray because all you jerks that go ahead and ask me these dumb questions all the time. Your people, you think over the people in your church. Think about it someday. Just, just think about it. Think about so-and-so who lost their husband. Think about this old widower over here. Think about, and by the way, the Jolly Sixties will be largely women. They've outlived their husbands. And here they say, what do they got to do? They could sit home and watch that stupid, dumb, rotten, filthy television. And they could go ahead, or they can sit around on the phone and gossip. I used to have some of my church that say, you know that every single morning in the world, a Miss Blyle calls me on the phone, talks for an hour. We talk over. What do you got to talk about for an hour every morning except somebody else that you shouldn't be talking about? Now, your elderly, retired people, something that's just for them, something that they feel belongs to them, doesn't belong to just anybody in the church. Doesn't belong to any other age group. Belongs just to them. Jolly Sixties belongs to them. Jolly Sixties is theirs. <laughs> Number two, who do you want to get? Not only your elderly, but unsaved elderly folks in the community. Now, if you've ever done anything with deaf people, if you've ever done anything with the deaf, you will know that they have a, they have their own culture. They have their own people. They have their own, they're clannish. If you can find one deaf, you'll find practically all of the deaf in the area. They, they've all, they've, they've, they either know somebody who's gone to the deaf school in the state or, they, or they, they have some link together with the deaf. The deaf know where other deaf are. If you get one deaf, you get a couple of deaf people, you'll, you'll have the key to all the rest of the deaf. May I say that the, the retired folks in the Jolly Sixties are similar. A lot of them have sat together in the Social Security office waiting for things. And that's all you do is in the Social Security office is sit there and wait for stuff. And uh, they have gone to the same Medicare things. They've gone to this. They've gone to that. They, they, they have a, a link because they have been in this same age group. But they're unsaved ones in your area. When I started Jolly Sixties in Ruskin, Florida, we mimeographed a little flyer. I'm, I'm great for mimeographing junk. You know, put something out there. I don't care what it says. Just, just put it out. Put the name of your church, and you always have to put several things. You know, I've been to some, some churches that did not have the name of the church on the bulletin, did not, have the name of, did not have the address, did not have the phone number, didn't have a thing on there that you could even tell where it's from. I've seen folks advertise meetings, didn't tell where the meeting was. And I had to preach the meeting. You want to remember some things about advertising a, a meeting or whatever. It's who, what's going to happen, where is it going to happen, and when's it going to happen. Who, what, where, and when. Well, I remember a little thing. I said, we're going to have Jolly Sixties. Who's it open to? Anybody in the community that's 55 or older, and it's going to be a, a club for folks that are Jolly Sixties. My little slogan. If you're uh, jolly, uh, we need you. If you're not, you need us. Yeah, a little slogan there. And um, so uh, one lady, hearing aid in both ears, Mrs. Leola Burgess, uh, you excuse me, but she was a Yankee. She's from New York State. And, um, <coughs> oh, isn't that awful? And, uh, <coughs> She was a wintertime visitor, and she lived in a little trailer in, in uh, Ruskin, Florida, with her brother. She was 78 years old. He was 82 years old. His name was Louis Heifacker. And Mrs. Lola Burgess had gone to her mailbox with all the others in the uh, mobile home park, and uh, she looked on the ground, and somebody had pulled out one of my little flyers that I'd mailed out to a bunch of people and to uh, box holders and stuff in the area, and it told about the the Jolly Sixties program. This is the first one we ever had. First day we ever had it. 
And she said, Ma, that's nice. I think we ought to go to that. And so she got six people, and they came to Jolly City. She loaded up her car. She's driving, 78 years old. And she drove five people and herself and brought them to Jolly Six. She says, well, that she could barely hit. She only had 2% hearing in either ear. And she, she said that she long since quit going to church because uh, she couldn't understand the preacher, but for some reason she could understand me. Maybe because I yell all the time. But Mrs. Burgess came. And at the end of the program, I gave the invitation, as I always do. Now, it isn't a romp and stump and get down on your knees, your dirty sinner, and come down. No, no, you need to respect those folks, first of all. Treat them with great respect, just like you would treat your grandmother or your mother. And so you softly talk to them. And I said, now, uh, dear friend, let's have our heads bowed and our eyes closed. I said, now, I've talked about how you can know you're saved and go to heaven when you die. Uh, do you know you're saved this morning? If you don't know you're saved, I'd love to pray for you. Would you just slip your hand up and put it right down again? Well, I also asked how many knew they were saved. Some raised their hand. She did not raise her hand. After uh, that service was over, that day I found her card. Everybody fills out a card when they come to Jolly 60. And Mrs. Beebe and I went to that little trailer home on Thursday night soul winning visitation. Knocked to the door, gracious. Oh, you're Brother Beebe. Come on in, Brother Beebe. We came to Jolly Sixties. And she told me the story of finding the little little uh, paper on the, on the ground and coming to Jolly Sixties. I sat there. She's Episcopalian. Her brother was a Methodist. And I used to be Episcopalian before I got saved. And so I said, you know, I used to be an Episcopalian, and I was confirmed in uh, so, so forth. I told her. And I told her the story of how she could be saved. And I said, Mrs. Burgess, I said, would you like to be saved? And she said, well, you know, she said, anybody ought to want that. That sounds awfully good. Yes, I'd like to be saved. <laughs> and we had prayer, and she prayed and asked Christ to save her. Then I asked her brother, I said, Louie, have you ever been saved? No. He said, I haven't. Oh, he told me jokes about preachers. You know how some of those older folks were be. I said, would you like to be saved? Yes, I'd like to be saved. And he asked Christ to save him. And I said, you know, I said, now the next thing you need to do is follow the Lord and believers baptism. Show everybody you've been saved. She said, well, that, that sounds like a good thing to do. Sunday morning, I baptized both of them. Got them down at baptistry. I about swam out of there without swimming. <laughs> One day in January, by the way, she kept bringing people to Jolly Sixties. She kept coming. Uh, she was, she'd had seven heart attacks. Very ill type of woman. And as far as I know, she's still alive in her 80s. And she's, she, last time I, she called me, she said, I'm taking care of some old woman out here. She'd go back to New York in the summertime. And she said, no, you know, Brother Beebe, she said, this is a strange thing. She said, I found the right thing. I tried to tell everybody up here, said, they think I'm nuts. They think I'm crazy. But I'm not crazy. I found the right thing. And she said, I witnessed everybody comes to the door. She said, I witnessed to this one, that one, my old friends. And she said, I've been taking care of this 98-year-old woman. She said, I witnessed her and wanted to Christ. <laughs> oh, oh. It's wonderful. One January, she'd come down, and in January, I used to have a stewardship month, and I'd talk about what we need to give to the Lord. And I said how that God has made us stewards. We're not owners, really, of anything. We're just uh, managers that God has given us. And so I said, uh, you know, you ought to tithe. Next Sunday, she came up to me, and she'd sat, you know, second row down there real close where she could hear. And she said, Brother Baby, she said, I'm 79 years old, and she said, I, I had never heard about tithing. I did not know what tithing was. So she said, I went home, and she said, I, un, I, I added up everything I own. And she says, here's a check for 10% of it. She gave me a check for 
<laughs> we bought some more buses. <laughs> God is my witness. I didn't lead her to Christ to get a dime out of that woman. I did not be nice to her because I wanted to get anything out of it. But God spoke to that woman's heart to help us in financial church with a whole bunch of little bus kids. Huh? Come on. You say, well, it won't work. We don't have a base of strong church. I'd like to talk about strong church, too, but I never have had a strong church like that. Oh, we've given thousands and thousands to mission until we supported 50, 60, 70 missionaries. Oh, yeah, we've done all of that. We want a lot of folks to Christ, but we just hand them out all the time. You may have big budgets and stuff. I, I never did. I just I spent it all. <laughs> I was always trying to invest it because I didn't want God to come and catch me with all that stuff in the bank. Oh, well, we painted it all up. That's going to mean a lot when Jesus comes, doesn't it? Not paying any payments. And you got, hey, Jesus, you got, hey, Jesus, look what I got. I got, I got the mortgage all paid off here, Jesus. <laughs> Leave it for the Antichrist. He's going to need it next. <laughs> there are unsaved people in your area that will not come to church, but they'll come to John 60s. They'll think that's a nice idea. Isn't that thoughtful of that church doing that? for the people in our area, that age group. And they'll do it. Number three, not only for your elderly, not only for your retired, not only for the unsaved in your area, but there are some saved, born-again Christians that were saved in old-time fundamental churches who are still in that same old denomination because grandma and great-grandma and everybody's buried in the backyard of that church. Or grandpa gave the money to start the first church or build the first pew or some such dumb thing. And they're sitting there. They're starving to death. They've been starved to death. They're emaciated. They have malnutrition. They're going to die of hunger. But they're saved. They have no food at all. They are starving. They're hungry. And you may be, have the opportunity of feeding them in John 6. They'll still stay in that dumb Presbyterian church. They'll still stay in this or that or something else that's long since gone modernistic and the, the pastor there doesn't even believe the Bible anymore, doesn't give the plan of salvation, but they're still going to stay there. That They're too old to move, they think. Have you ever met anybody like that? Huh? Come on. But you can minister to them in jolly 60s. And isn't that what we're in business for? Isn't it to, in the people business? Yes. Feeding Christians in bad churches. Make sure that you, when you announce what it is, that you don't say, <clears throat> this is a Baptist thing or whatever you happen to be. And I'm going to use that because I'm a Baptist, and basically this is a Baptist meeting. And uh, if you say, well, I don't like you talking about us that aren't Baptists. Well, this is a Baptist meeting. Sorry, that's the way it is. <laughs> now, and I hope not to talk about you. I'm just saying it. All right, now. But put in the paper, all churches are welcome. Everyone's welcome. This is not just a Baptist meeting. This is for everybody. It is. All right, let's talk about some things. What should you call this? Don't call it the Sunset Years Club. I don't want to hear about Sunset Years. I don't, I don't want the sun to set. I'm not looking for the sun... Uh, Hugh Pyle wrote a book, uh, uh, a good, good book, but he named it wrong. It's something about sunset years. And th there was such an uproar with the Jolly Sixties and the, that age group that they had to change the name of the book. Uh, don't, they don't want, uh, this next to death club. <laughs> One foot on a banana peel club. No, no, no. I, I'm very partial to Jolly Sixties. I'm very partial to that. Now, you're going to have a lot of 70s and a lot of 80s in this thing, and you'll have a few 50s in this thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm very partial to Jolly 60s because that kind of sets it, says it all. It starts with a kind of an age group. It means kind of retired folks, but it means jolly. We're going to have a big time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have some fellowship. Now, some people say super 60s. Here's some names. Senior saints. Keen agers. Prime timers, golden age, whatever you want. <laughs> Gray power, whatever. <laughs> Gray power is going to make it on Thursday afternoon. 
<laughs> All right, now, whatever you want, but be careful. Don't, really, don't name it some dumb thing. And I really would not vote on how, what to name it. Don't vote on the, the, the Precious Years Club. Don't, you know, don't, don't do that. I don't, there are a lot of things I don't vote on. I don't vote on what kind of bus to buy. You'll have a church split. We have Ford people out here. We have Dodge people. Lord, help you. <coughs> We've got some <laughs> Chevrolet folks, not Chevrolet, Chevrolet folks, and we got it. Now, okay, let's talk about uh, when do you have this thing? How, when, where do we have this thing? Number one, when? Weekly you have it. Now, I've been in a lot of churches that said, well, brother, baby, we just, we just have it once a month. I really don't like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying... I don't like it. You say, well, we don't have a big church. I'm not talking about a big church. You're gonna, you'll start out six, seven, eight, ten people, maybe 20 people. You may start out with more. But um, do you know if you get this thing rolling and you do it in your church, do you know what these people will do? Thanksgiving comes up and you say, well, we're going to cancel it because of Thanksgiving. Oh, don't cancel Jolly Sixties for Thanksgiving. You mean you want to come the next day on Friday and have Jolly Sixties after that? Yeah. They don't cancel for Christmas. They don't cancel for nothing. I mean, they don't. They won't let you. We've got to have Jolly Sixties. The sun comes up, we're going to have Jolly Sixties. You know. Why? Because they, they found something that's theirs. Something that's theirs. <laughs> they found some love. They found some compassion. And some, somebody to listen to for a change. We've lost the art of listening to older people who have basically forgotten more than we'll ever learn. We are not near as educated as some of those people are. Not near. Now, when should you have it? I would have it towards the end of the week, Thursday or Friday. We started having it on Thursday, but it interfered with soul winning visitation, so we changed it to Friday. We had it on Friday, so basically we have it on Friday. And also, Thanksgiving would come up, and we'd have to change it anyway. So, uh, to another day of that same week. Uh, so, I did it Friday. When do you have it? Don't have it at night. And there's, there are reasons for everything I'm going to tell you. Uh, reasons that are tried re reasons. Number one, don't have things at night for Jolly Sixties. And, and I've gone, how many churches I've gone to? I said, do you have Jolly Sixties? Yes, I've got Jolly Sixties. When do you have it? Once a month. When do you have it? Uh, on Saturday night. Older people do not want to go out at night. Why? Muggers, number one. They're afraid to go out of the house at night in a lot of places. Number two, they are brittle. They're, you say, well, so-and-so fell and broke her hip. A lot of times, the hip broke before they ever fell. And they fell because they broke their hip beforehand. They don't want to take the chance of stepping. Their, their eyesight is not like it used to be. Dark Darkness. They, they can't see like that. They're night blind. They cannot drive at night. There are a lot of reasons that you don't have it at night. They're afraid they're going to step in a hole and twist their ankle, be laid up, and that's going to be disastrous for them. Some of them are living alone. They, they, can't, they can't make it like that. That's really going to... So don't ever have it at night. Just don't ever have it at night. That's the first thing. <laughs> have it during the daytime. I would say the best time to have it is from 10 uh, till about 11.30. That, that segment of time, about an hour and a half. And I'm going to tell you just exactly what to have in it, so forth, all that. Now, if you have it at 10 o'clock, say, Jolly Six is 10 o'clock Friday every day. 10 o'clock Friday, Jolly Six is 10 o'clock Friday. They'll be there at 9.30. Am I telling you the truth? You know, you know the, the, this age group. They'll be there at 9.30, sitting there, smiling, talking. Talking to me. And that is a time, Pastor, for you, oh, what a wonderful time for you, to go and just pat and just touch them and just to take them in the hand and hold their hand a little bit and say, oh, I'm so glad to see you. How you doing? How are you, Miss So-and-so? I'm so glad to see you. And that's when you let them tell you everything they want to tell you. You take that segment out, and you use that first 30 minutes, you just talk to them. You just talk to them. You just talk to them. You know, there are a lot of those people nobody's talks to. Their kids don't talk to them anymore. Kids are too busy trying to earn a living, pay for a house, get two, three jobs, and so forth. 
They haven't got time to talk to those old people. Well, I'll do my thing. I'll call them once a month. And da, 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 da. You talk to them. You love them. Be a surrogate of a child for them. All right? <clears throat> um, what do you do afterward? Usually, we have a potluck. Now, if you want to work it in conjunction with your school cafeteria thing, okay. And, and uh, while we're saying this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some things don't do. I recently heard about one Jolly Sixties program, <laughs> and uh, there were some shysters running the thing in the church. And they said, okay, you can come and we'll feed you, we'll feed you. And they fed them just nothing, just a little bit of nothing, and they charged them 4 or $5. First of all, no Jolly Sixty should ever have to pay for anything if they don't have it. Just, it's free. It's free. You come to Jolly Sixties. This is your club, and it's free. Boy, you don't have to pay a thing. And if it's something that it costs, we'll raise the money for it. Don't you worry about it. We'll get it for you. Because this is for you. This is to honor you. This is to honor your gray hair, the years that you spent raising us. And doing for us, brother, you're the king around here if you're in the Jolly Sixties. Okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, potluck. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something we did. Uh, in your areas, some of your areas, there are special dishes that are going to be lost, special foods that are going to be lost if you don't record how some of these grandmas fix them. And, you know, some of them, it's a pinch of this and a pinch of that, and they whip it all together. You know, they don't really know how to do it themselves. But if they're motivated, maybe they would write it down. There are grandchildren that need to know what Grandma cooked and how they cooked it. They said, this is our grandfather, grandmother's favorite dish, and she made this so beautifully. You know what we did? The part of Jolly Sixties is they need expression. We were talking about, Brother Schaefer was talking about, you know, you need to practice with the kids so they can sing and so forth. In Jolly Sixties, anybody can sing who wants to sing. Why? Expression. You say, but their voice cracks when they sing. And they're... Wonderful. All the rest of them's voice cracks, too. You're among friends, boy. You're among, you're among our folks. This is, this is one of our singers, boy. Hey, man. <laughs> need to have the great grandmother's trio. Yeah. And the grandfather's quartet. Hey. And call them something, you know, uh, Barber Shop City and so forth and so on. But you, you just keep doing things. Expression. Uh, for instance, we said, okay, now next Jolly Sixties, I want you to fix the, the thing that you're noted for as a cook. I mean, the thing, whether it's a dessert, a main dish, or whether it's, uh, it's that special <coughs> green beans, French green beans with the, with the, Onions on the top, you know, and the little crispies and, and baked with that mushroom sauce in there. And mm, let them cook it. And I want you to bring next, I want you to bring the recipe for it. And then I'm going to take a picture of you beside your dish. And we're going to make a cookbook for Jolly Sixties. And we're going to put your picture in there. And we're going to put your dish and everybody in the church will be able to to share in your life. Honor them. This is what I'm talking about. Honor them. Honor them. Nobody wants to honor. We want to honor you. Man, you're, you're, you're the one. Um, <clears throat> where to have this thing? <laughs> have it at the church. Now, I've had some folks, uh, it's okay, it could be at another place, but I don't like to have it another place. I want to get them used to coming to the church. See? And I want them to know that the church is the sponsor of this, and the church is also the one that cares about them. That this whole thing is because the church cares. We care about you. That's why we're putting this whole thing on. Now, uh, number three, what do you have? A varied program. There are all kinds of things. Now, you're going to have, you say you're going to have four a month? Yeah, you're going to have four or five months, whatever it is. Uh, now, what, what do you, you want to have? I had one program called Let Me Tell You About My Grandchildren. How many uh, grandparents do we have here? Let me see your grandparents here. Let, let me see your hands. Uh-huh. Uh, let, me, let me tell you about my grand. See them right here? There you are, buddy. There, there they are right there. You, you want to see my little twin grandbaby boys? There they are. 
Three little boys, three years old. They are the cute. They're smarter than anybody you've ever seen. And if you are a grandparent, you know the feeling that's in my heart about those kids, don't you? Huh? And you just love to whip them out and show them somebody. Huh? Well, how about a program for your mother where your mother could bring out the pictures of all her grandchildren and put them on a table and say, this is Lois Jones' grandchildren and have one minute to stand up and talk about any one of those grandchildren she wants to and hold the picture up and express herself in front of all the rest of the Johnny Sixties the same age. What's that going to do to her heart? She's going to say, you know, I talked about you and Johnny Sixties today. I told them how you're pilot one of those their planes that fly up in there. And, and, and I told them you was my favorite grandson. Expression. Of course we want it. But can they do that in church? No, they can't do that in church. They can't do that. Nobody's willing to listen. But in Johnny Sixties, everybody's going to spread the tables out and have them put all the pictures out. Uh, by the way, <coughs> you can get those little license plates. Let me tell you about my grandchildren. The one that brings the most visitors to Jolly Six is that they get one of those, those plates or gets a little folder. Let me tell you about my grandchildren with all the little places where you can put the children's pictures in. Okay? Now, <coughs> what about this? Christian school day in your church. If you have a Christian school in your church, <coughs> our Jolly Six supported two bus kids off the bus route to go to the Christian school. Those kids would come and report to them. Once a month, we'd have the Christian school kids come in, and they would try that. You know, they're always practicing for a Thanksgiving program or a Christmas program or an Easter program. Let them practice on the Jolly Sixties. That is the most appreciative bunch in the whole church is those Jolly Sixties. They will clap at the drop of a hat, you know, and laugh at anything. You, you think you're really funny until you get out of the Jolly Sixties. <laughs> the Jolly Sixties will laugh at anything. You'll get up there and they'll say, <laughs> They're precious folks. They're precious folks. Uh, school day. Hobby day. You know every one of them's got something they've done. Collected pictures. Had a man made a steam engine. You know, I had one of these big steam engines. Had somebody else's hobby was playing the Jews harp. You know, and somebody else could played a guitar and played a harmonica at the same time. You know, and, and there's some lady, well, she, as I used to sing, and ladies will cross-stitch and have this and that. Bring hobby. Everybody gets to bring their hobby and tell something about it. Okay? Or, or have a picture of it, tell something about it. Now, <clears throat> and again, I said, this is the place to have special numbers from the Jolly Sixties group because they, they may not measure up to sing in church, they may not be the best thing put forward. They may not be your best put forward on Sunday morning. It might scare some people to death, so I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, on Jolly Sixties, that's a great thing. All right, what else? Sometimes the director of Jolly Sixties should speak. Uh, sometimes the pastor should speak. Maybe the same person. Sometimes other fundamental pastors in the area who are pastors of some of the people who come, let them speak. Um, attorney, how about a Christian attorney come talk about wills? There's some of them scared to death to go to an attorney. You know, they're afraid somebody's going to flinch them, do something wrong, you know. And uh, you can find some good Christian attorney and answer their question. Many of them have the same question. You, I, I'll tell you this. I would be willing, if I was a betting man like some of you guys are, I would go ahead and bet that half of the Jolly Sixties in your church do not have a will. They think they're going to live forever for some reason. I'm talking about people 70 and 80 years old who do not have a will. They do not have any will whatsoever. You need to get some, some standard wills that would hold up in court and, and say, hey, look, we want to help you next time in Jolly Sixties. We're going to have some wills, and they're going to be there for you free. You can have them. We have an attorney there to answer questions and how you can uh, uh, leave something to the church if you want to or how you can get something for certain people in your family so that your wishes are carried out so the government doesn't get your money or, or the state doesn't take what you wanted to give to somebody and, 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 and absorb it. We're going to get to something on, on this line. Just think, 
I had a heating and air conditioning guy come. Uh, Jolly Sixties are very conscious of heating bills and air conditioning bills, electric bills and utilities and things like that. And they want to know, is it true when they advertise on television, save 50% on your heating bill if you get this insulation? Is it true or is it false? Uh, what could they do to uh, conserve? What could they do then? A doctor can come and speak. Uh, doctors, uh, uh, a Christian doctor, let them come and speak on, on problems of aging, different uh, uh, medical problems that are common to all. A missionary, they love to hear missionaries and see slides, and these are the great prayer warriors of the church. They're the ones that need to, so field trips, take them on field trips. Now, uh, you'll think, well, more people will go on the field trips. Usually less people will go on the field trips than come to the regular meetings. Uh, I'd get them on a bus and we'd drive somewhere. I took them, for instance, to the port of Tampa, and I'd pull right up under the shadow. Boy, one of these great big freighters would be out over the, the edge. I'd put the, I mean, the, the, right underneath the freighter there. I'd say, boy, isn't that a big thing? Isn't that a huge? Oh, that's big. Look at that. I'd get the captain to come and step on the bus and tell us who the crew was on it. And this particular freighter had a Japanese crew. And uh, the captain came close. They were hauling phosphate out of the mines in the interior of Lake, Lakeland, Florida, up in there in Plant City and so forth. And they were hauling phosphate to Japan and told how they loaded it and told how many days it took to get to Japan, how fast the boat would go. Uh, wouldn't you, listen, wouldn't you like to ask the captain of a ship some questions? I'm, I'm interested in those things. I'd like, in fact, is the thing to do is think about something that you would be interested in and then do that for a project in Jolly Six. I'd like to tour some factories. I took them to um, Chevrolet plant in Atlanta, Jolly 60s. Toured the whole plant, went through it. I mean, saw the robots coming around and welding everything. I saw it where they, they dipped it into the, 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 uh, the different uh, vats of paint and all the other things and saw it painting the whole thing. And assembly line comes off the assembly line, everything else. And the, they had public relations people in most of these plants will come and just kind of wine them and dine them and say, now, this is this and this is this. And they were interested. You know, I took some of the Jolly 60s to an old car factory in uh, <clears throat> Bradenton, Sarasota. Where's the fellow from Bradenton? Where, where are you from Bradenton here? Uh, but there he is back there. But uh, that one, Sarasota, you know, the old music in the car place. Those people went nuts. They loved that. Those men were going around, I used to have a car just like this. This might be my car, you know. <laughs> hey, you know. And man, they were telling me stories about this old Rio car and this and this and this. I mean, it was a trip down memory lane for them. And there was a car that they could all sit in and have their picture taken. And I took some Polaroid and some extra. I said, would you like your picture taken in this old car? Yes, I sure would. And they got up in there. We snapped the picture. And the smile said, pizza. And, you know, and, you know, and take some picture. Hey, look. Love them. Love them. Do something. Isn't it about time we quit just doing for us and start doing for somebody else? Doing for some, Do something nice for somebody who cannot help you? Huh? Airports. They wouldn't go out to the airport and look around, but you could take them out to the airport and even take them on one of the big airplanes. They, a lot of, you'll find half of them never been on airplanes. Never been on airplanes. They'd like to see them. Have some one of the pilots come out, tell them all about the plane, so forth. Um, <coughs> go Dutch treat to a restaurant somewhere. Reserve in advance. Say, now we've got some Jolly Sixties coming. We want a discount. And, we'll, and you say, well, if we can't pay, well, let somebody pay for them sponsor them and so forth. But tell them about what it is, the whole business about it. Um, we had an annual big day in our church for Jolly Sixties. Uh, here, let's see if I can find the, the, the publication for it here. Here it is over here. Fifth annual Jolly Sixties rally in our church. 1,500. We had 1,250. You know how had for the speaker? Dr. Theodore Epps from the Back to the Bible broadcast. Wow, those people, some of those people... Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, why they'd milk their cows to listen to old Theodore F. in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. They'd, they'd listen to him on Back to the Bible broadcast as they'd milking their cows and feeding the animals and so forth. They'd heard him for years, never seen him. I had, uh, come on and go Hawaiian. 
And uh, we had Hawaiian punch. We served everybody Hawaiian punch. I invited folks from all around the state. Any Jolly Sixties group wanted to come. They could all perform. I said, dress Hawaiian. Have a muumuu on. Have some kind of a, a Hawaiian dress on. Come and kind of dress up and we're going to give everybody a, a lay in. Can you imagine old dignified Dr. Theodore Ip, uh, who I don't think ever raised an eyebrow in his life. Dr. Theodore Ip with a, with a lay around his neck preaching about all oh, the dead kings of Israel and how that is. He was dry as dust. They loved him. They loved him. Dr. Epp, I've heard you for years. Dr. Epp. Now don't get the famous youth speaker to come and speak. Get the oldest one you can find. Somebody they've heard. And let them come. And I mean shake the hand of Dr. Theodore Epp back to the Bible. Bronger. That, no, that was a man. That was a, he's dead, gone with the Lord. That man did come. He Back to the Bible. What a, what a slogan. Back to the Bible. So they came. We fed them baked ham, uh, beans and salad and Hawaiian salad, all this kind of stuff. Free. Everybody came. Our people just pitched in and we got, and we served all of our Jolly Sixties and served. They came and served them and bowed to them, honoring them. Oh, hey, that's what we want to do, honor somebody. And honor preferring one another. Huh? <clears throat> have a big day. By the way, you ought to have an annual day when you honor the Jolly Sixties in your church service on Sunday morning. Um, we had something called the story behind the hymn. And we talked to them about hymns. They, they've sung some of those hymns for years. Didn't know how they were written. Get those things. We had overnight trips. Uh, we had some two or three days to Epcot and Disney World. And uh, my wife went and chaperoned some of those folks <laughs> on some of those trips to Epcot and other places. We take them to Gatlinburg and let them see the leaves change. We take them, yeah, yeah, hook them up there. Now, let me give you this point. They'd never go alone. They'd be scared to death to go alone. You think, can you imagine two 65, 68 year old uh, a couple going alone to Epcot or alone to Disney World? No, they wouldn't do it. So you say, hey, we're all going to go. Anyway, there won't be any drinking, won't be any swearing, nothing like that. We're just all going to go together. Hey, we have a nice time. How about a Hawaiian budget buster? Go all the way to Hawaii. Oh, yeah, well, all kinds of stuff. Uh, boat rides. I, I asked uh, some folks in our church. Uh, one fellow had a 50-foot boat. And, man, I took them all out to the dock, and he'd take them out about a mile or two on that boat and cruise out there. They'd never been on a, on a yacht in their life. And that old yacht settled down. <laughs> out there. And those people sitting on there, about 12 or 14 of them sitting on those deck chairs. They loved it. Then he'd come back and get some more, come back and get some more. And then we all went in and had a nice luncheon. And have, always you have devotion. Always you preach a sermon. Always you give an invitation. <laughs> Do you know what I took them to? I found... Excuse me, but it was a primitive Baptist church. Almost to Lakeland, Florida, a primitive Baptist church that had for their front sign a tombstone. Indicative, I think. <laughs> great big tombstone, so-and-so primitive Baptist. But they also had a graveyard in the back. And they had a place, you know, primitive Baptists meet all day, you know, only once a month, but they meet all day. And uh, <clears throat> they have a big place to eat, and so I... Pick, pick, uh, picnic and we uh, furnished cold drinks and people brought picnic baskets in the Jolly Sixty. We went over to the Fossil Museum, looked all around there, saw the bones that dug out of the phosphate pits and everything like that. And then we drove over to the church and I said, let's go look through the graveyard. I said, we'll have, we'll have a nice little meal here and have a picnic and go through the graveyard. And we went through the graveyard and people said, well, look at there, look at there. That person died so and so. That's when my brother died. And so, oh, well, that look, that that person was old as my mother. Look at there, and so on. And they just read tombstone. I never saw such a bunch in my life. A lot of them were killed in the war. They were in the war. See, they were in the war, and they said, "I remember that." Hey, they were killed in the Battle of the Bulge. I remember that. I was there. I was there. In the, you know, and and they, listen, the whole thing is jog some memories. Let them express themselves. Let them do these things. Now, 
Now let's talk about the order of service for just a moment. Uh, we have just a few moments left. What do you do in the services? Well, there are all kinds of things to do. You can sing some just old songs that aren't Christian songs. How about let me call you sweetheart, honey? Lower. Lower. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. Keep the love light glowing in your eyes so brown. She got brown eyes. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. And they love that. They just go nuts about that, you know. Valentine's Day, we have a big heart up there, and, and we let everybody give Valentine kisses. If we keep track of how old they were, uh, how, uh, when their anniversary was, they'd been married over 40 years. If it came up on that week, boy, we'd make a big sheet cake and decorate it up and take a Polaroid picture of them sitting under an arbor with a big thing. Hey, why not? Why not do something for it? By the way, uh, who are the folks in your church that send cards? Who do you get a card from when it's your birthday? Who do you get a card from when you're sick? Who likes to get cards? It's the jolly sick team. You can get offer them a, a gift a box of assorted gospel uh, greeting cards, and you get two or three of them to bring some visitors. That's what they want. They're buying cards all the time, you know. Send them cards. Always have a happy birthday time or a happy anniversary. Okay, now, jolly six, who had a birthday this week? And now, I didn't sing just plain old happy birthday song. We had a different song, Okay. And let's, we're going to do this. A happy birthday to you. An anniversary too. Anybody have an anniversary? Okay, come stand over here if you've got an anniversary this week. Okay, okay. Now, how about that? Birthdays right over here. Okay, all right. Now, by the way, when they get that age, they don't care about how old they are. But when you can get out of them how old they are then. In fact, is they'll tell you how old they are then. First thing, hello, I'm 55. No, <laughs> you know. Uh, but we'd sing, okay, let's sing happy birthday to them. A happy birthday to you, an anniversary too. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, an anniversary too. And the best year you ever had. Aren't we glad for these anniversaries today, folks? Aren't we? Come on, let's give them a big hand here. All right. Did that make them feel good or not? Oh, of course it did. You know, we all need recognition. We all need a hand clap once in a while. We all need somebody to pat us on the back. We all need somebody to love us. We run on that. And here's a group of people who are very, are very much put in the background and forget all about things. Then <coughs> we'll sing some choruses. We'll do some things like that. We'll have prayer for the sick. Uh, through this age group, there are a lot of sick folks. And so we do that. Now, we will take an offering, but usually we just put a plate at the back, and if you want to give something, you can. There, there's no pressure. Listen, folks, if you don't ever have a dime, you come to Jolly Sixties. We want you here. There will always be a place for you. There will always be something for you to eat here at this place. You'll be welcome just like you've got a million bucks in your pocket right here at Jolly Sixties. Jolly Sixties is the place to come, folks. Don't miss that Jolly Sixties. Birthdays, anniversaries, offering and announcements, prayer for the sick, and then the message, and so forth. There are a lot of things that we could talk about. We're about out of time. Uh, let me give you two songs that we do sing in Jolly Sixties. And these songs are two other tunes that you may know. And they are uh, our Jolly Sixties theme song. One of them is, Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. We're the Jolly Sixties traveling through this land Looking for the Savior and the promised land Oh, that will be glory when we all get there Home at last, cares all past, ever to rejoice Well, that's just, just we're the Jolly Sixties 
then isn't the Jolly 60 something wonderful to the tune of Isn't the Love of Jesus Something Wonderful? Were the jolly sixties with a smile, spreading cheer and comfort everywhere. If we have a problem that's worthwhile, all our care we take to God in prayer. Oh, isn't the jolly sixties something wonderful? Wonderful, oh, wonderful. Oh, isn't the jolly sixties something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. Let's sing that chorus together. Isn't the jolly 60 something wonderful? Wonderful, oh, wonderful. Oh, isn't the jolly 60 something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. Good, you're a great group this afternoon.